guys, Mr. Klein here with the first of three lessons in our chapter on cultural diffusion. What we'll be talking about today is bartering and money, obviously. Uh, but we'll also be talking about cultural diffusion specifically in the second lesson. Finally, the best historical example in the ancient world that we have of cultural diffusion and bartering and money, which was the Silk Road. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Money. Money makes the world go round. Without money, we couldn't get anything done pretty much. Uh, well, I mean, in our modern world, historically money didn't come around for a while. But anyway, it's really important and really central to what our society and uh, the global economy is based on. So let's go ahead and let's look at how money came about and what's so good about it. I mean, other than it's green and you can throw it at people. Anyway, so let's playing, you're playing on your phone. You see an advertisement for a new game. You go to the app store, you find the app from the ad. You see the price of the app is 99 cents. You have money in your account, and you so you click buy, you download the app. So what happened? Well, there was an item that you wanted, the app. In exchange for the app, you gave money. In a nutshell, that whole thing. You had something you want, you give money for it, you get it back. That is economics, okay? The, the whole thing of economics is, in a nutshell, ex the exchange of goods and service. So to define the two terms that deal with the heart of economics, we need to go, we need to say what those things are. Okay. First off, a good is an item that satisfies a human need or desire. Shoes, apps, cars, even tacos are all good. So all of those things are goods, things you can buy and you can use, physical items. On the other hand, a service is any economic activity that is offered as a product. Whereas goods are things, services are things that people can do for you. Any job someone does as a service for doing chores, you know, for an allowance, that's a perfectly good service, uh, all the way to uh, being the president. Yes, being the president, he gets paid. Well, I mean, former President Obama uh, at the time in his video. Okay. So traditionally, the exchange of goods and services were exchanged through what we call favor. You know, favors are still a part of what we do today. You know, you ask someone for a favor, then you trade, you trade goods and services through favors. But over time, what happens if you have someone from another civilization that you can't say, well, you know, if you do this for me, I'll give you like five sheep. You can't do that. Well, that's when what you do is what you call bartering. Bartering is the exchange of goods or services of value equal to the both sides of the exchange. It's a fair trade between the two. Throughout most of history, bartering occurred between two different cultures, okay? And the amounts of the exchange were what both sides thought was an equal deal. Okay, so that's that's an equal or even deal. And that's the thing with bartering, is you have to understand that both sides have to think is equal. If not, they wouldn't make the trade. Now, the problem with bartering is that whenever you want a good or service that the other person doesn't want. For example, you're an almond farmer, okay, and you have almonds to trade for a car, but you can't trade the person because uh, they have nut allergies, okay? You can't have a barter that takes place from there. So what do you need? Well, you need something that both groups of people need to agree on as having something of value, and that's where we come in with our next section about money. So if you want to barter with someone who has nut allergies and all you have are nuts, well, you can't get things done. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to find something that both of you have value with. And that circumstance is which what money was invented for. Okay, money is an item used in exchange for goods and services and accepted by people in society as having value. In short, money, yep, that stuff, money is used as a substitute for items being bartered. So money is an item that is used in exchange for goods and services. In the example of the app being purchased, the 99 cents spent is the value placed on the good being purchased by the consumer. In other words, you say that the app is worth 99 cents and the value of the manufacturer, the person who made the app said, you know what, I made this app, it's worth 99 cents. And so we see we see that all over the place, okay? For example, at this Green Gulch Farm Organic Produce Farmer's Market, okay, purchasing money, uh, purchasing goods through money 
have to do with both sides finding the value. The person buying the fruit, well, they think the fruit and the vegetables have a certain amount of value. And it's the same as the person selling it. Okay, so it's similar to bartering, but what's exchange is something that both people find of equal value. And that's the key here with money, is without an equal appreciation of value, money would be worthless. Because, I mean, after all, everybody loves money. And that's what's one of the advantage of it, which we'll talk about in a later section. So whenever we talk about money, there's different types of money. I mean, if you dig in your pocket, you probably have pocket change. And then there's dollar bills in your wallet and there's credit cards and there's so much stuff that we can talk about. And we'll kind of lay out the basics of that there. So money essentially can be made of anything of value, anything of value. For example, shells, stones, or as we already discussed with African history, salt could be used as money. Anything can have value can be used as money as long as both sides can agree on the value of it, which was the thing with the salt in Africa. Remember, they were able to use it as money because salt was very, very rare in the southern parts of West Africa. Therefore, it had value. Of course, in areas where salt is very plentiful, I mean, for example, where our school is at, we have all these salt mines in the area. Salt wouldn't work for us because, I mean, you could just go dig in the ground and get some salt. As much salt as you want. But most money from history actually came from precious metals such as gold or silver. Yes, my precious. Yes, gold, Gollum. Uh, for example, these some of the first coins were minted in modern day Turkey in the 600s BC. So even before the Athenians came around with their democracy stuff, metal coins were first started being minted as money. In addition to this, paper money was printed because it was lighter than coins and its value could be made up by the banker government creating it, okay, which gets into inflation, which we're not going to talk about. But essentially what made money good was, paper money good, was that if the government could say that this piece of paper was worth 20 bucks, which if you think about it, a $5, $10, $20, even a $100 bill, an R, in our modern day economy, there isn't much difference in the actual value of the materials used to make it. It's just that the numbers on there, that's the only difference in the value of it. Now, of course, the first paper money was made in China in the AD 700s. And look, you can look at, this is an example of some of the first paper money. And this is an example of first paper money with what's used to print it. And what's even interesting is in the uh, the writing on the bottom, it says if you're counterfeiting it, you'd be executed. And of course, counterfeiting is making fake money. Now, money comes in many f shapes and sizes, as you can see. These are all 5,000 notes. The most common form of money we use today actually isn't really paper money, but rather it's plastic money in the form of credit cards. In fact, most economic transactions today all consist of ones and zeros. In fact, yours truly is your teacher. I don't even get a paycheck. I just get direct deposit. In other words, I never get a piece of paper saying it's worth that amount of money. I just log into my checking account and it says I have that much money. And unless I go to an ATM, I can't, I can't withdraw any cash. So it's important to know right here that modern day, we've actually moving away from physical money into electronic currency. Now that gives us some particular advantages of money in general, whether it's paper money, uh, coin money or, you know, plastic money on the computer, which we'll talk about in the next section. Okay, so what are some advantages to money? Now, we're, we're going to look at money in comparison to bartering, and we'll find, well, we'll find that, that money has some several advantages. They have some very definite advantages of the medium and exchange, which we'll look at with our graphic organizer as well here. The first one is that money is universally desired. In other words, Everybody wants money, okay? Mr. Krabs loves money. And the thing to know about money is that everybody, you don't need to have someone exactly with what you want, for example, in order to exchange money. So there's four easies of money that our graphic organizer has, so you can go ahead and fill out. The first one is easy to desire. Everybody wants it, making it easier to use. The second one is that money has a universally accepted value. In other words, a dollar bill is worth exactly one dollar to anyone who has it. That's right. Everybody values it. You look at it, you say, hey, that's how much it is. There's no arguing over how much how much a dollar bill is worth. And that's what gives it a really good advantage. Everybody finds it valuable, so there's no arguing over the value. You're not going to have saying, well, it says a dollar. I, I think it's worth five dollars. No, you don't have that with money. It's easy to value because it says it on the coin. The third one is that money can store wealth. 
Now, unlike a good that can spoil over time, after all, fruit, you can't keep like bananas forever, okay, because they'll rot, or a service that stops when it's done, you can't, you can store money to gain wealth. And that's what's really, really good. You can actually store money. You can store it under your mattress. You can put it in a bank. You can invest it. You can do whatever you want, and it will store well. So because it doesn't rot or spoil, you can easily save it to use later. That's what's easy about money. And finally, and the final one in our lesson we'll talk about, is that money is easily carried, which makes it much better than bartering. I mean, if you make garden gnomes, it's far harder to carry around a wheelbarrow full of gnomes to get something through bartering than it would to bring a wallet of cash with you. Now, that's not to say that throughout history, money wouldn't become worthless. Going back to the inflation thing, uh, in the 1920s, after World War I, the German government was stuck with a lot of debt uh, that, that they had to pay after losing World War I. So they got the bright idea. If they just started making more money, you know, more dollar bills, they could pay off the debt. This led up to like rampant inflation where, you know, you could bring a wheelbarrow full of Deutschmarks and it would only be worth enough to buy a loaf of bread. Like I said, we're not going to get too much into inflation in this video. We'll probably talk about it in class because I'm pretty sure some of you will want to know about that. But suffice it to say is that money's easy to carry around, okay? And unlike goods and services, I mean, you're going to carry a wheelbarrow full of garden gnomes wherever you go if you make them? No, because, like, that's hard to carry. So let's go ahead and let's wrap up this lesson here, okay? So we talked about bartering and money. We know that goods and services, goods are physical items, services are things that you can give. Traditionally, economies were run on favors where, you know, oh, you do this for me, I'll do this for you. But you can't do that with two different cultures. Okay, so that's where the system of bartering comes up, where there's an equal trade of what people think is equal in value. The problem, of course, is when you want something and you can't find anyone to trade for. That's where money comes in. Money's an item that's used to exchange goods or services. There's two main types. There's coins and there's bills. And then now, through the internet and electronic banking, we have electronic. We have these, you know, we have these same coins and bills, but they're they're represented through computers. And money has four really good advantages to it. It's easy to desire. In other words, everybody wants it. Everybody agrees on its value. You, it, because it's portable, you can carry it around easily. And plus, because it's portable, you can store the wealth because it doesn't spoil or expire like goods and services can. So there you go. That's the lesson on money and bartering. In our next lesson, we'll be talking about cultural diffusion. And we'll talk about tacos again and why tacos are so lovely. So if, as always, you have any questions, please let me know. And thanks for watching.